All right, it looks like our participants are mostly in the room. Um, so again, we are gonna get started, talk to you a little bit about movement and discoveries orientation. Um, here at the University of Denver, we are excited to welcome our new students in our families and their support systems. Uh, so my name is Amber Cardamone. Um, I serve as the executive director uh, for our university and for new student and family programs, all things around discoveries orientation and parent and family engagement. And I'm joined today um, with a few colleagues that are gonna also be talking to you a little bit about the move-in process. Um, so of course, first and foremost, we wanna introduce you to our office, our unit, New Student and Family Programs. Again, we're here to support you and your student as they transition to the institution. Um, we hope today we're gonna to provide you with some familiarity around the services that our office, our office provides to you. Um, as a parent, but also to introduce you to housing and residential education and the support services that they can provide you and your student as they transition into our institution. Um, we also are gonna make sure that we're talking to you about extensively around the move-in process, some of the communications that have been going out to your students around that process, um, as well as some of our web source, websites and resources related to the schedules for orientation and the move-in process. Um, we'll also talk a little bit further about ongoing engagement. Um, we do see our parents as partners in the process with us, and we do have a few ongoing engagement opportunities and communication strategies to keep you in the loop about what's happening um, with your student and all the opportunities for them here at the university. So I do want to just provide you with a little bit of an overview about our office. Um, again, new student and family programs. Um, you'll see that there is a QR code here on the screen for you um, and a link to our website. Um, so we want to make sure that you do know that this um, website is available to you. Um, you will see when you log in um, that you can go ahead and see both discoveries orientation as well as new student or family programs engagement opportunities. Um, so you'll be able to see some of the more details that we are talking about to you today around discoveries orientation and parent and family orientation. And we'll also be able to provide you some information around the move-in process um, as we'll be launching some additional communications uh, for that in, uh, early next week want to just call out two of our email accounts as well. Um, so our parents and families are encouraged to uh, email parents at du.edu with any questions, comments, or concerns that they may have. And then we do encourage our new students um, and any student at the university to email discoveries at du.edu related to questions around new student transition um, and orientation. We're able to help to support them or guide them to the right resource. Uh, I just want to introduce my team a little bit further, and you're going to be hearing from them uh, throughout the duration of this webinar. Um, but as I said, my name is Amber Cardamone. I serve as, as the executive director in supporting new student orientation and the student experience. And I'm here joined by two of my great colleagues, um, Liz Spooner, who's our assistant director, and Annabelle uh, Toledo, and uh, she is our program coordinator for parent and family programs. Uh, so we'll uh, be joining you a little bit further about that. Um, to talk through discoveries orientation and parent and family orientation. But before that, we wanna to talk to you about our move-in process and the move-in schedule. So I'm gonna turn it over to our great colleague, Colin Wallace. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this webinar to hear a little bit more about the move-in process uh, for the fall quarter um, that will be taking place on September 6th. My name is Colin Wallace, Colin Wallace Conco. People call me either one, it's interchangeable. Um, I am the Associate Director of Residential Operations here in Housing and Residential Education. Um, I also wanted to inform you all of some of our some of my other colleagues within our department. Uh, Shana Alston is our Executive Director of Housing and Residential Education. And then Dietrich Robinson Miller is our Senior Associate Director of Residential Education. So really between the three of us, um, we kind of oversee all the housing processes um, and really try and create a very inclusive, stress-free stress move-in experience um, for your students um, and you all as families and support systems. Uh, moving on, I just kind of wanted to briefly talk about the move-in day schedule, what that looks like. Um, I will then go into some move-in day logistics and then talk about like what we provide, what to bring, what not to bring, that sort of stuff, just as like a little bit of an overview. But looking at the move-in day schedule, um, move-in to the residence halls will actually happen from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Tuesday, September 6th. Um, during that 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. time slot, I'll talk about you know, how students get move-in time slots, whatnot, in a little bit, but we'll touch base on that. Uh, from 3 p.m. to 5 
p.m. parents um, will be able to attend like a parent and family resource fair. Our discoveries orientation team will talk about that a little bit later um, inside of this webinar so that you have all of that information. Um, at 4 p.m., we will have our new student housing floor meeting. So all students who are moving onto campus on Tuesday, September 6th, um, will be asked to attend a floor meeting um, that takes part in their community at 4 p.m. to learn about you know, housing policies, learn about how to get involved on campus a little bit more, how to make some connections with students on the floor, um, meet their resident assistant and who that contact is. Um, so that if they have questions throughout the year, they, they know who to go to, when to go to them, where they live, um, and how to make the most of their collegiate experience when they arrive to campus. So it's, a, it's really a great time uh, for students to kind of get that introductory um, piece to living on campus and, and all the different things that campus can provide them and offer them. And then beginning at 5 p.m., our discovery orientation team will kind of take over. They'll have a check-in, a Crimson Cookout, and they'll talk about the 4D experience. And I know that my, my esteemed colleagues are going to talk about that a little bit more um, as this webinar goes on. So let's talk about some of the moving day logistics. Um, first and foremost, our DU community is extremely excited to welcome students, families, and their support systems on Tuesday, September, uh, Tuesday, September 6th. Um, it's a very exciting time. It is, it is one time that everybody kind of gears around, they work really well together, um, and they just want to really welcome everybody to this community. Um, and so, you know, we're really excited for that to happen. Um, the movement time slots, once again, are 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Students have received email communication, um, I believe at the beginning of August, um, regarding move-in time slots specifically and how they were assigned to a block of times per, per their floor um, so that they could actually select a 30-minute time slot in which they would actually unload their vehicles, unload their belongings, and move them into their residence hall rooms. Um, one thing that we do ask, we will, we will send out a reminder communication later on in the month of August, but a couple of things we do ask is we ask people to not arrive earlier than their time slots. Um, unfortunately, we put the time slots in motion because of the fact that we really try and manage the traffic flow. We try and manage kind of the, the flow of students going into our buildings, the flow of students utilizing elevators um, at the same time, right? And we don't want students and families and support systems to be waiting around um, whether that's to get into parking lots or getting into the elevators to get up to their floors, we really don't want a huge congested mess. Um, so we do kind of put those time slots in place to kind of manage some of that traffic flow. Um, when it is time for your time slot, um, please arrive to the short term parking lot assigned to your building. That information was provided in the students um, housing assignment letter. So that information's in there so that they can see directly where they go for short-term parking. Uh, that short-term parking will be a 30 minute unload process in which we will have volunteers to help un unload belongings from vehicles. We'll have large moving bins that we can put all those belongings in. Um, and then essentially move it all to the, to the room that the student is staying in. And so um, we're hoping that this is a very stress-free process. We're hoping the ideal hope is that families and support systems don't have to lift anything, that would be my hope. Um, I know right now we've got 200 plus volunteers ready to help on, on that day. Um, and so we're hoping that kind of um, takes place. And we're hoping that individuals when they're in that short-term parking lot will be there for less time than 30 minutes, but that's just kind of what we've allocated. Um, another logistical thing is our COVID clearance. Um, so we will not have mandatory COVID testing upon arrival to campus. Um, but we will have a, a COVID clearance process where um, students will need to submit all the proper documentation for whether that's an exemption um, to the COVID vaccine or whether that's providing their vaccine information, booster information, um, along with uh, like a vaccination form essentially to make sure that they're cleared. Um, all students then will be able to log into their Pioneer web and it will actually show them a clearance status. And so we just ask that when students arrive, that COVID clearance status says students are cleared um, and it shows green. Um, that'll be something that we ask for when arriving to the short-term parking lot um, so that we can allow students to, to pull into that parking lot, start unloading belongings. If for some reason a student is not cleared um, through their Pioneer web, we'll actually 
ask them when they come to the short-term parking lot to actually go and meet with our COVID team, um, our COVID campus partners, to make sure that that clearance does take effect and that you do get to the clearance status and see if there's anything missing or what may be the delay in that process. So I really encourage individuals to um, go ahead and be very mindful of that process early um, so that you can make sure that COVID clearance um, is in place when you arrive to campus. Students will, um, students, family and support systems will arrive to those short-term parking lots to, to start the unload process. Once that unload process begins, um, we will have students check in at the assigned building desks. So for example, if a student is assigned to um, Centennial Halls, they will actually have short-term parking near Centennial Halls and then they will go to the Centennial Halls front desk to check in, pick up their keys, pick up their student ID, um, and get all the necessary things to, to get to their room. Um, one, quick my, uh, one quick note about student IDs, students can actually upload their, their photo before they arrive to campus. Um, we encourage that because essentially what we can do is then we work with our ID card office to actually provide us um, those ID cards for each student that have uploaded their photos ahead of time so that we can include them with their check-in packet. Um, so that students have immediate access to the residence halls, you know, exterior doors and whatnot, because all of our all of our exterior doors are um, access controlled. And so students will need their their ID card to get into all of our buildings. So we really do encourage students to upload that photo well in advance so that our ID card office can print, print those IDs ahead of time so that we can include them in the check-in process. If students do not do that ahead of time, they will be asked to go over to the ID card office to, um, to take a picture and get that card printed on the spot um, and then their access will work. But to avoid some of those delays, we just ask that you upload that process ahead of, or upload that photo ahead of time so that we can have those IDs ready for you upon return. Uh, moving on. Um, so I just want to touch on some things that DU or the, the Housing and Residential Education Department provides for students when they get here, some things that they can expect in their room. Um, all of our beds are extra long twin beds. So that's really important when it comes to purchasing bedding, um, whatnot, right? Like we, we try and put that up front so that individuals don't buy queen sheets or twin sheets or full sheets, but they are extra long twin beds that we provide every single resident. Each resident will get a dresser, a desk, a desk chair. They will get a closet or wardrobe of some kind. And then in all of our communities, um, students will have access to a fridge, freezer, and microwave. In a lot of our communities, we actually have a micro mini fridge setup um, for students um, where they will be able to actually access that right there in their room. Um, for some communities, we may have microwaves like in a, a community space that they still have access to on their floor. Um, we are trying to make sure we're providing at least microwaves and fridges in every room, but we are in that process of working on that. So there may be some communities that still have access to those in um, their common spaces. Uh, we will also have trash and recycling bins in each of our student rooms. Um, this is to help kind of manage some of that, that trash um, and recycling in the halls. And then students will be able to take it to various trash and recycling locations um, in our buildings or just outside of our buildings. So um, it all kind of depends on the building and whether it's inside, outside, um, but students will have that ability and we will have signage that clearly marks where to take trash and whatnot. Um, all of our rooms also have high-speed internet, so students can bring a laptop, they can connect right away. We will have IT folks on hand um, to help with any connectivity issues. Um, for the most part, you're logging into our um, internet with a student's username and their password. So essentially, um, you know, what would be like an email address and, and essentially their password um, is, is really how we get into that um, internet. Um, and then we will have maintenance and, and um, custodial and IT kind of on hands um, to fix things that may break. That is not only on move-in day, that is also throughout the school year. Um, so let's say a desk chair breaks for some unknown reason. Um, we have our custodial team or our maintenance team here to kind of repair that, replace it, whatever may, or whatever, um, may be the, the necessary action um, to really provide a student with, with 
the, the necessities that they need to have a great college experience. Um, some things to bring. Um, so this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but I know it's one that we get a lot. It's, it's typically what we get the most questions on, um, but toiletries, um, bedding for twin XL beds, laundry supplies, each of our buildings have, you know, washers and dryers for students to utilize. Um, so they'll need detergent and dryer sheets with that. Um, I highly recommend shower shoes, um, especially in communal spaces. Um, you know, sometimes we do clean them daily, but sometimes something happens and they're maybe not as clean as you would like. Um, and so we just recommend shower shoes um, for students so that, you know, their feet aren't getting icky if, if something's, you know, not quite cleaned or maybe it was cleaned already or some, something be the case. So I just recommend shower shoes to prevent any sort of, um, you know, I guess fungus or anything. I, I don't know what it may be. That's what it was when I went to college. So um, I'm just providing that information, that knowledge for you all. Um, school supplies, obviously, to prepare for the academic year, uh, desk lamps, and then in our apartment and suites, um, students are able to bring like a toaster, frying pans, griddles, crock pots, um, whatnot. In other locations, like our communal residence halls, um, there's not necessarily enough space for toasters and crock pots and all that sort of things. Um, students can certainly bring those and they can use them in like the community lounges, um, but that's just one thing to kind of keep in mind um, as we move forward. Some things not to bring, um, refrigerators, microwaves, as I kind of talked about, we do provide those, um, so students won't necessarily need to bring their own in any way. Um, air conditioners, right, we ask that students not bring air conditioners. Um, in some buildings, potentially, if microwaves, fridges are plugged in and an air conditioner is plugged in, we may flip some breakers um, and students may potentially lose power on one side of the room or something because the outlets are overloaded. Um, and so we just ask students to not bring those. Um, candles, candle warmers, incense, heaven forbid, anything is left unattended, a fire begins, you know, then, then you know, we don't know how that might impact communities. Firearms or weapons of any kinds, um, unapproved pets um, are not allowed, lamps with halogen bul bulbs, space heaters, and convection ovens. So, so there's just some, some of the things to kind of keep in mind. Um, we do provide some, you know, central air for all of our buildings. So we'll provide heat and air, um, heat at least. Some buildings don't have air conditioning. Um, but for the most part, the time frame that we're in, where school is in session, we're not dealing with super hot temperatures. Um, so that's not typically a, a huge issue. And then I think we're going to open it up for questions. All right, Colin, we have a lot of questions coming in. Um, so everyone, we're gonna do our best to get through most of those. Um, so Colin, one of the, the biggest questions people have um, specifically is related to after their move-in slot um, and their short-term parking, where, where should they or will they be able to move their cars after they yeah. move in? That's a, that's a great question. So inside that housing assignment letter that was sent out at the end of July, we also have designated long-term parking lots for all of our buildings as well. So students, families, and support systems will arrive to those short-term parking lots we will help with our volunteers unload all the belongings, take them up to the room. Once all of the belongings are, are out of a vehicle, we'll ask students, families, and support systems to move their cars to that long-term parking lot. Um, we will have short-term parking placards on hand to hand out to people so that we know they're in there for a short-term parking. When it comes to long-term parking, they can go and head to that location. Um, if students have parking passes for specific lots, that parking pass will take effect later that evening. Um, we just want to try and make sure people are staying to the long-term, short-term lots in the throughout the day so that we can manage that traffic once again. But come later that evening, individuals would be allowed to park in the parking lot um, assigned with their parking permit. Great, thanks, Colin. Um, with that, um, the parking permit, is that something that's emailed to them or do they need that as, can you just talk a little bit more about that parking permit when they get it or how it's used? Yeah, so um, 
Parking, we also include that in, in that first assignment letter email um, and communicate that students can go to the parking website right now. They will actually be able to purchase those parking permits at this time. Um, then what happens is our parking office actually sends them the parking permit to their physical mailing address. So if students are purchasing those parking passes right now, hopefully, you know, I believe our parking services team, they're, I think they're sending out parking passes daily at this point. They will send that off in the mail and students should receive it before the sixth so that they can bring it with them. Um, if for some reason they have not received it before the sixth, there is an option where they can request a temporary permit from parking services that they can actually print out, bring with them so that they have that information and they still have that, that right to park. If individuals are coming early, we have, as part of like an early arrival program for some instance, we have communicated who those individuals are with our parking services team so that parking services can work with them to make sure that their parking permit is active, whether that is the temporary one or the actual physical parking permit that parking services will send them. Thank you. Um, okay, we have a few logistical things. Um, I know you touched a little bit on some of the amenities. Can you talk a little bit about the student's responsibility for cleaning or vacuuming rooms? I assume upon arrival, the rooms will be fully cleaned, prepared for move-in. But beyond that, can you talk a little bit about that? And then maybe get into like internet, all any amenities that might be provided. Um, yeah. for students in their yeah, room. Of course. Um, so when it comes to the preparation of the halls when, when students and families and support systems arrive, rooms will be repaired, rooms will be clean, rooms will be ready to go as if um, you're moving into a, to essentially like a, a brand, like a, a new house or an apartment or whatnot, right? Like that will be turned over and ready to go for students. Um, as the school year kind of progresses, um, students will be responsible for cleaning their own like bedroom space or, or if they're in apartments or suites, that space, right? They'll be responsible to clean that. Um, in communal spaces, um, we do have custodial staff that will clean bathrooms, common areas, that sort of thing. But if it's like apartments or, or suites or anything along those lines, students will be responsible for cleaning their own bedroom space, their own kitchen space, their own bathroom space. We do not have custodial staff coming in to take care of that. But then in those communal spaces, the bedrooms that are shared between two roommates, um, those will be, students will be responsible for cleaning those on their own. Um, when it does come, when it comes to like vacuums and whatnot, we do have of a limited inventory of vacuums at our front desk that students are able to check out um, and, and rent. Um, they're able to do that by just coming down to the desk, just showing our desk staff their, their student ID. We'll enter that into the system and they'll be able to check that out. And then when they bring it back, we'll check it back in. Um, so we do have that, um, that amenity for students as well. Now, please be mindful, it is a limited inventory. We don't have like 300 vacuums on hand across campus, right? Um, we have you know, maybe seven or eight per building that students can utilize. Um, so there could be a possibility that all the vacuums are rented at that time. Could be a possibility that maybe a vacuum, you know, is broken and now we need to do some repair of it. So, you know, just be very mindful of that um, when looking to, to potentially rent out some of those vacuums. Uh, when it comes to internet, internet is a free amenity. Students do not have to pay for that. Um, we do not have cable on campus. We found that most students stream things nowadays. So with the internet, students will be able to stream TV or whatever they want to kind of watch. Um, so we do not have like provided internet for students. Um, I'm trying to think of other amenities. I think those are kind of the main ones that we provide in the residence halls. And then we always have a support system there as well. So we always have the RA that is going to serve as like a support system, a mentor, somebody that questions can be asked to. Um, you know, they do go to class as well. So they may not be around every single moment of every single day, or they may be sleeping. Um, so it's very mindful to just know what that, that balance is. But RAs will communicate that information as far as when they're available, when they're not available, um, and how you can get in contact with them to answer any questions that students may have while they're living in the community. Hey, Con, one clarifying question with that. Is the internet Ethernet or is it Wi-Fi or do they have both options? I believe it is solely Wi-Fi. 
Um, but if somebody, if whoever has that question, my email is in the PowerPoint. If you shoot me an email, I'll follow up on that specifically. That's a, that's a good question. I've just never seen any ethernet yeah. hooked up from students. I think the Wi-Fi is very easy to connect to. Um, and so I think most students go that route. Uh, so Colin, there are a lot of questions. Um, so I just wanna let the, the participants know that we may not be able to get to all of the questions that are coming in. Many are very specific to a particular hall, um, just around like, are there carpets? Is there air conditioning? Are there elevators? Um, maybe there is a website we can direct them to, or is that something easiest for them to just email or call housing to get some of those questions? Um, I just don't know that we can do that individually for every hall right now. And I yeah, do no, have I, other I definitely questions agree. about moving. Um, I think we will have more communication that does go out towards the end of the month. So hopefully that'll answer some of these questions. Um, Amber, are you able, I, I don't know, this is a webinar feature that I'm not familiar with. Are we able to somehow get a list of all the questions where maybe I can, I can start looking at them, try and figure out some answers. And then if individuals call our office or email our office, our front desk staff will be able to answer some of those for them. Um, yep, we can certainly do that for you. Okay, great. We'll yeah. maybe uh, compile an FAQ and then send it out to the participants. Yeah, that's that's what I was kind of thinking. Um, we Are do you? have FAQs already done, but I'd like to do it specifically regarding the questions that are asked here. Yep. Um, but students can also, or students, families, and support systems can also reach out to housing at du.edu, which is like our general housing account. And some of these questions can be answered that way as well. Great. Um, there is actually quite a bit of questions related to early arrival. I know we Great. do have some early arrival programs. Can you maybe speak a little bit to anyone who is coming earlier? Does their move-in process look different or will that look the same? Yeah, so um, early arrivals do not have a, a time slot. They also do not necessarily have short term, long term parking locations. And we unfortunately don't have a ton of volunteers to help with that move in process. Unfortunately, um, we do start early arrivals as soon as from some instances, August 1st. Um, so we've been moving people in gradually. Bulk of those early arrivals will come the 31st of August. Um, but I think when talking about early arrivals is really it's from 9 a.m to 3 p.m. after the 31st that students can, student family and support systems can check in to their building front desks and pick up keys. Um, we will also be sending out information, emails to those early arrivals specifically because we have also gotten some questions about what that process looks like. Um, but they should also be able to ask um, if those emails come out and questions are still left unanswered, they can also ask their coordinating departments who can get in contact with us as well um, so that we can get some of those questions answered. But we will be sending out an email communication early next week to early arrivals specifically so that they understand and recognize what that process is and how it does differ from um, the regular move-in day process. Wonderful. I'm just looking through just to see if we have any specific move-in questions that might be helpful or applicable um, to everyone. Um, I know a lot of this will, again, we just talked about in our um, take the Q&A and then make an FAQ and we'll provide some of that. Um, we do want to dive a little bit deeper too into Discovery's orientation schedule. Um, so both Liz and then Annabelle will talk specifically about parent and family orientation, things that overlap with move-in. So there's quite a few questions in the chat related to that. Um, so if that's okay, we'll go ahead and move um, in that direction. I did go ahead and put housing at du.edu um, in the chat. So feel free to go ahead and utilize that to reach out um, to Colin and his team to help um, get some additional questions asked. Um, but again, we will follow back up with you with a general move-in FAQ guide um, early next week and posting some information on websites, um, as well as some supplemental emails that are coming out to students. All right, so with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over um, to Liz. Colin, we thank you so much for your time and for being here with us. I know you and your entire team are excited to welcome our students here in September. Great, thank you.
Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Again, I'm Liz Spooner. I am the Assistant Director of New Student Programs and Student Experience here at the University of Denver, and would love to chat with you all a little bit about our Discoveries Orientation Program. Please feel free to leave any questions in the chat. I'm going to go through a few different components of the Discoveries Orientation Experience and hope to address any questions that come up. But again, um, we will have opportunities for an F, uh, kind of FAQ guide after this, as well as some answers in the chat. So. As our students come into the University of Denver, we are super excited for them to join us and our current student body. So we practice a Discoveries Leader 4D Mentor Model, which is what we call our 4D Ls, 4D Discoveries Leaders. And those are paired with FSM courses. If your student is a transfer student, they will be paired with a leader that is a transfer student like just like themselves and will be not paired with an FSM course, but paired with other folks who are entering in as transfer students, which is a really awesome, exciting opportunity to get to know other students who share that identity and experience. Our 4D Discoveries Leader is going to do a check-in with those students, and they will travel with the student group to the mountain campus when your student does go to the mountain campus um, during the fall, or they're invited to go during the fall. We are not going to touch on that on in this webinar today, but that mountain campus trip will happen during the first quarter of their first year at DU, um, and during the first four or five days on campus, we will stay here on the ground at Mountain Campus, which will be really, or on the ground at our Denver campus um, to make sure that they really get to know the campus and get to know their community. Throughout the fall quarter, your 40, um, your student's 40 discoveries leader will maintain that relationship with your student to make sure that they're just connecting, getting your student connected to resources. We acknowledge that our students have a variety of mentors and thinking about um, their residence assistant, thinking about their faculty and staff and student organizations they might partake in on campus. But um, our hope here is that we really provide them with a robust set of um, leaders that can support them in their transition and ease your worries for them. So if you, Annabelle, you wanna progress to the next slide. What we have here is our orientation week flagship events. You can always access, and I'll put this in the chat right now because I think that's sometimes helpful online, our full Discoveries orientation schedule. So Discoveries orientation takes place from Tuesday until Friday. However, we do also support a number of programs that go on throughout the fall. So um, thinking about this, what we have here is really just an overview. Your student will have the opportunity to log into Crimson Connect. That's a student only um, event platform and student group platform where they can um, sign up for different events and really start to build their community and build out their schedule, which is super exciting. Um, so for Tuesday, we have obviously move in and parent and family orientation. Annabelle's gonna go over that schedule eventually as we progress through this. And then we have the 4D experience. So that's our first Discoveries After Dark. Discoveries After Dark is a program that we also support with our student activities team. So Discoveries After Dark provides programming for our students every night of the week during Discoveries Week. But that first night, you all might be around. And so our parents and families are invited to join with the 4D experience. So there's gonna be a lot of exciting um, information coming out of that that we plan to share with you all in your newsletter and on the Facebook page as that date approaches. But um, we hope that you'll join us for that. On Wednesday, we have the DU class photo and new student convocation and the family farewell or parent farewell. Um, I know there was a few questions. There was a question about that in the chat and Annabelle will also address that, but we hope that you'll join our students in that really inaugural experience and to meet some of the folks that will be supporting them here on campus and maybe even meet some other parents. Then they'll have a meeting with their FSEM or if they're a transfer student, they'll also, they'll have that meeting with that group. Um, your student should have enrolled in an FSEM course as a part of their course plan for that first year. So hopefully they're really excited to join that. Um, our students really love utilizing this time during the FSEM meeting to meet their peers and get to know them better. Um, then we move into our Crimson Connections, which is an opportunity for students to meet faculty and staff on campus. It's a kind of a unique experience that the student will learn about in more detail, and you can see more details about that on our website. Thursday is their orientation group check-in, so that FSEM group um, check-in resource roundtables, which is an opportunity for them to get connected to different resources that they've probably heard about through their online course modules. So right now, we also are hoping that your students are completing the online courses in both Canvas and EverFi. They've been getting a bunch of communications about these, and it is critical that they complete those before arriving to campus so they don't get a hold place on their account for future enrollment. Then we have our transfer student programming and FSM meeting, and then new student college reception. So if your student is a declared student, they'll join their major or department. 
um, to learn a little bit more about what exactly the academic expectations are there to meet some of those faculty and staff that they might not have connected with already. And it's really a great time for students to also see who else um, is in their major or in their program, or maybe um, address some of those questions they might have academically. Friday, they have FSM destinations. So for our um, Epsom classes, a big tradition there is that they get to go on a little destination with their group into the city or maybe on campus, so different activities. Our students partake in that, again, kind of introduce them to their relationship outside of the classroom or orientation groups. Really like getting to spend this time to get to know one another. And um, that Epsom destination is something that they really enjoy. So um, stay tuned to listen to your student or to hear from your faculty member about what that might look like. And then that Friday, our transfer students will leave for their first ascent weekend. So again, we'll talk a little bit more about first ascent and students should expect communications from our team about first ascent this upcoming Monday. So encourage them to be checking their DU email if they're not already, as their DU email has been getting a lot of really good content that we work incredibly hard on about discoveries, discoveries after dark, FSEM, and all the fun things about being a new student. And that kind of wraps up my portion of these flagship events during discoveries. Hi everyone, my name is Annabelle Taro and I'm the um, Parent and Family Engagement Coordinator for um, New Student and Family Programs. I'm going to walk you through what parent and family orientation will look like those first two days of Discovery's orientation. Um, it will start with, of course, move in. You'll be able to help your student move in at their assigned time um, and have the rest of the time afterwards. Um, if you are done um, moving in early, you can always join our family lounge and campus tours that we'll be hosting from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Um, tours will start off at 9 a.m. Um, and go on all the way until 1 p.m. Um, and in our family lounge, um, you'll be able to sit in an air-conditioned room and hang out and um, get to know other parents. Um, we're also working on a special project um, known as the Wish Wall, where you'll be able to write on the wall of the gallery, um, a message for your student, something that you hope for them to have um, experienced or accomplished within their first um, quarter here at DU. Um, from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, will be the Parent and Family Resource Fair, and that will be a really good opportunity for you to walk through um, the bridge between Community Commons and Driscoll Commons um, and interact with different um, offices and departments across campus. Um, and get to know what resources your student can access as well as what resources you're able to access as a parent, family, or support system. Um, it's not a sit down session, it's a tabling event, so you can come and go as you please. Um, after that from 5 to 7 p.m. will be our Crimson Cookout. This is a great opportunity for you to sit down and have dinner with your student as well as with other um, parents, families, and support systems, and really get to know um, this new community that your student is joining. Um, as well as, again, you'll be able to attend the 4D experience that night and get to see what that will look like for your student and what that will look like for you as well. So these are also some great engagement opportunities for um, parents, families, and support systems. We do a monthly newsletter from September through May um, throughout the academic year. Um, there's also the DU Family Facebook page where we'll be posting updates throughout the academic year of events, um, important things happening on campus, important dates and things like that. Um, homecoming will be October 20th through 23rd. Um, and we will give you more information on that as we receive it from other offices around campus. And then family weekend is usually in late April or early May, and we will be announcing the dates for that sometime in January, depending on the lacrosse schedule, so we can get it lined up with a really great game for everyone to go and watch. That is my portion. If anyone has any questions, drop them in the chat. All right, thank you, Liz. Thank you, Annabelle. 
Um, Liz, I know you did touch on this a little bit, but can you maybe talk a little bit further about some of the communication strategies that have been going out to new students throughout the summer, and then some of the upcoming communications that we'll be sending starting next week? Um, I just want to make sure that that's reiterated to our, our families and that they can encourage their students to go into their DU email. Um, and then Annabelle, once Liz kind of talks about that, we can maybe talk a little bit more about some of our communication moving forward with families. Yes, absolutely. So I'm about to drop in the chat. Someone had asked about um, action items and important dates, which I think is an important um, partner to some of the communications that our students have sent, as I saw a question in there about important deadlines. And I think that's just a great resource. So throughout the summer, we have worked to distribute a number of newsletters that have gone to our parents and our students alike. So our parents and students have received three email communications, which have been sent out on, or were sent out on June 15th, July 15th, and August 15th. So the most recent one was just sent to your students, which should have also linked to um, our previous newsletters if they haven't received them, but would really encourage them to risk to check their um, orientate their DU email if they are uncertain about any of those things. Those um, newsletters have gone over everything that the students need to know in terms of registering for classes, getting connected with housing, and then also their online course content that is necessary for them um, to complete before their arrival. So the Canvas and EverFi courses have been communicated in that as well as well are linked on our website. Your students might have also received some communications from um, maybe their department or other programs that they're a part of on campus. And that is also a resource. Again, all of this existing in your students' email, which is um, something we really, really, really encourage them to check um, as that is where they will be getting their communication. As we think about moving forward, your students have, or I guess in this most recent email, we also shared links to join Crimson Connect. Crimson Connect is where a detailed schedule of your students' um, schedule lives. And so they can go in there and actually um, add things to their schedule. They can browse the whole schedule. Um, and that is a really great detailed resource as we like to be mindful of safety. We've posted all the locations and more detailed schedule in there. So that is something that your student will need to use their single sign-on the University of Denver, so their DU email, DU password to log into to ensure um, they can access that. Um, throughout this next month, so, or I guess in the weeks leading up to Discovery's orientation, we plan to send out a communication on this upcoming Monday about that schedule, again, to just remind students of what they can look forward to and the details there. Then we also will be sending out some information on the Kennedy Mountain campus first ascent. So the first ascent, I know I kind of breezed over that, um, but that will also include, I know there have been some questions about packing lists, but those packing lists should be largely things that your student is already planning to bring to campus, including a pair of good tennis shoes or good walking shoes um, and some other details. So they can anticipate that. And then also the weekend that we are um, recommending that they go in their email on Monday. So really excited to send that out because we're really excited to get to have all of our students on this. We say it's our first first ascent. Um, as you know, may know Kennedy Mountain Campus was purchased by the University of Denver last year. So this is really the first opportunity for our first year students and many of our returning students to experience Kennedy Mountain Campus during that year. Um, and then the following Monday, we'll send out another reminder on August 29th, I believe that's, yeah, that should be that next Monday. Um, that is a day that we're requesting that all students have their EverFi and Canvas courses completed. So if you could please um, be mindful of that as we approach that date, we'll be sending out a communication about that as well as um, on the 29th and as that date approaches. So students should really think about or really be checking their DU email to be sure that they're up to date. I know housing also has been sending out a lot of information there. As I said, our campus partners, as well as our newsletters um, have been supporting students in their communications via email throughout the summer. So I think that covers most of our communication at this point. Thank you, Liz. Um, and Annabelle, I don't know if you want to kind of tackle some of this, maybe talking a little bit about our 
official Facebook page um, might be helpful for families. Um, and then I know Liz just highlighted the new student communications, but we were sending to families in conjunction. And then maybe just reiterate a little bit more about moving forward, how we'll talk through those newsletters and share with families or how they can sign up for the newsletter if they haven't yet. Yeah, of course. So we do have an official Facebook page. I know there is an unofficial um, DU Parents Facebook group. Um, and I think that's amazing. I think it's great that um, parents and families are able to talk to each other. Just please be mindful that the information that is being shared on there um, is not brought to you by us. So it might not always entirely be the most accurate or the most recent information. So if you have any questions about anything that you see on that Facebook page or that Facebook group, um, please check either our official Facebook page that we shared earlier or send an email to parent.du.edu. Um, throughout the academic year, so starting um, in September and ending in May, um, we will be sending out a monthly newsletter with important dates for your student as well as for you um, and with different ca um, campus happenings, with different department highlights, so you can see what your student has been up to, what campus has been up to as well. Um, and get to know what community your student has um, joined, um, as well as sending out more targeted emails while we um, get more information about homecoming or get more information about family weekend. We'll be sending out specific emails about that as well as posting it on the Facebook page as well. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to just reiterate, I know I see a few questions kind of coming in just around parent and family orientation, new student convocation, and that, that family uh, send off. So I do just want to reiterate that parent family orientation is not required, obviously, in any way, shape, or form. It's merely a just additional support um, for parents and families to learn about resources, get connected, um, to have things to do. Like Annabelle said, we'll have a lounge. Um, we're going to have a wish wall where you can write a message to your students. Um, so there's going to be a little bit more, you know, opportunities for engagement, but again, not required. Um, we'll send further information once um, with the details and locations and specifics around that. We'll have an official schedule that'll be coming out, posted on our website. We'll also have the information at MoveIn. So when you do check in, you'll be able to find those details. Um, I know there's some questions around um, that. Wednesday, September 7th, the new student convocation. And we're encouraging and, and inviting parents and families and support systems to come to the new student convocation. But again, it's not a requirement. Um, it's not the type of farewell where you're gonna be like one-on-one -on -one with your student. You won't be sitting with your student or anything like that. Um, students will all be sitting in a specialized uh, section and then families will be invited to join as well if you wanted to watch. We'll also be live streaming that too. Um, so you don't have to physically be here and present um, to participate and to, to watch that. We'll also have the recording to provide after the fact. Um, so I did just want to share that. I know that sometimes it is a challenge um, in coordinating move-in and your flights and things like that. Um, I'll also say we do recognize that some of this information is it's coming out a little late. Um, so Annabelle, Liz, and I are all brand new to DU and in our roles. Um, and so we are just getting acclimated ourselves. And um, we will be, you know, in the future, obviously trying to share information sooner. Um, but knowing that we just started here at the institution and our team is kind of gearing up to support as, as best as we can. Um, we apologize for any confusion or anything um, that may have created some challenges um, for you in trying to coordinate this process. Um, but please know you can email us um, at parents at du.edu. Um, we are working on getting our website more up to date. I know Annabelle's been hosting webinars all summer, making sure that they're posted to our website. Again, getting updated information and schedule out there. Um, and then we are really going to start using that Facebook page a lot more to share information um, explicitly around move-in, pushing out our newsletters digitally, and making sure that you are connected um, to the DU community. Um, in addition to that, moving forward, we're hoping to do some survey and get some feedback from parents and families. So stay tuned for some of that. You'll see that in our newsletters coming up throughout the semester, at the court, uh, throughout the quarter. Um, because again, as I said in the beginning, we do see parents and families as partners. Um, so we will try to engage with you as best as possible, but we do want to get um, some of your feedback in that process. I am going to just do a quick one over. I know there are a ton of questions here in the chat, most of which I think are still geared towards 
um, move in. Um, but I am seeing again that Facebook. So I will go ahead and put that Facebook link. I did type it in the chat, um, but I will go ahead and type it here. Um, that is going to be their best resource. I know Annabelle touched on it, but best resource um, for information pertaining to accurate information, dates, and times. Um, we do know that there is another family Facebook account out there. Um, we are just not in that and we are not able to monitor it. So if you do have questions, again, parents at du.edu is going to be the best way to get most accurate information. Um, and then also, um, that official uh, Facebook page. Um, I will say that um, if you just go in and type DU NSFP, that is our official new student and family programs page. That will be us. That's the one you're going to be looking for. Um, the convocation, I'm seeing another question about convocation. That is on Wednesday, September 7th at 10 a.m. It is scheduled for a full hour. Um, it may not go the full hour, um, but we are asking parents to depart the institution after that experience ends. Um, if you are choosing to participate in the farewell, um, please feel free you know, to join us, but your student will have a full orientation schedule. Um, and so it's really important that way uh, parents are acknowledging that orientation is very critical to their success. We're trying to get them connected to other peers, making sure they're getting access to resources, you know, acclimated with campus. Um, and so we have found if parents stay, it gets a little bit confusing for the student of trying to you know, manage going to their required orientation sessions um, versus trying to connect with their parents and families. Um, so just making sure that it's clear right after that event, they'll continue on um, through Discovery's orientation. They'll be meeting with you know, their faculty of their um, first year seminar course. Um, they'll be meeting with other peer leaders, um, participants as Liz kind of covered the extent of that schedule um, of resources. Um, again, it's going to be parents at du.edu. Um, that is going to be the best email. That's how you're going to get a hold of myself and Annabelle. Um, so parents at du.edu um, if you need to contact us. Um, you can go ahead and make sure that you're checking out our website. We can post that one more time in the chat here for you. Um, but at the conclusion, uh, this webinar, um, again, we'll have this all recorded. We will get that posted and share it out. Um, and as I said earlier, uh, we will work to create some general FAQs in co collaboration with Colin um, to get that information out to our families. That will likely also be posted on our Facebook page. So um, just be sure that you're following, liking that page and staying connected. Uh, we appreciate the time um, with you all today. If we were not able to get to your question, um, please go ahead and email any housing or move-in related questions to housing at du.edu. Um, again, uh, Colin and his team are working on some FAQs, so we'll have some additional emails going out next week. Um, and then any questions related to parent and family engagement or discoveries orientation, feel free to email parents at du.edu and we can follow up with you there. Um, so thank you all for your time. I want to thank Annabelle and Liz for sharing with us today too. Um, and we look forward to welcoming you all to DU on September 6th when you move in, or if you're here earlier, we will be here here on campus um, and around training our discoveries leaders. And we can't wait to meet you all and to be able to support you and your student as you transition to DU. Uh, so have a great day and thanks for joining us.